All right, so this video is going to be about creating scatter plots in Excel. And I'm actually going to do uh, two uh, different things here, one on each slide. And then we're going to find the trend line, find the linear correlation coefficient. We're going to talk about those pieces as well. So the first thing, if you have two um, pieces of data and you want to create a scatter plot, it's really not too horrible. You first want to start by highlighting all of the data. So you want to make sure you have it all in one slide. And then I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to insert. Now I always just hit recommended charts. And if, it, if a scatter plot doesn't show up, I'm going to click all charts and and down this left hand column where it says XY scatter and then you can see I have a scatter plot. Now depending on what you want to do you can again add axis titles if you want to have years um, and you know tons on the side that's up to you entirely. For the purpose of this video we just want to create the scatter plot as we just did and now we want to find the trend line. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. There's one you can hit trend line here. You can also if you click on and make the dots show up if you right click on the dots you can also add trend line here either way gets you a trend line so you can see I have this nice beautiful line in the middle and when I clicked add trend line you can also see on the right hand side trend format trend line options showed up now linear is highlighted here because we have a linear trend line and I want to go down to the bottom where you see display equation on chart and displayed R squared value so I'm going to click both of those and I'm just going to click and drag those up so we can see them now if you recall we have here y equals mx plus b. So you can see the number in front of x is negative 0.2317. That implies that my slope of this trend line is a negative 0.2317. It makes sense that it's negative because the line is pointing downward. The y-intercept for this particular case here is 463.93. Well, if you look at my y-axis, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but recall a y-intercept only occurs when x equals 0. And the way this graph is written, or drawn, excuse me, here at the y, at this vertical piece, uh, x is 1989. That is not 0. Those are not the same. That is why the y-intercept looks so funny. Now, that's the trend line. Boom, we got it. We have the equation in y equals mx plus b form. Now, finding the linear correlation coefficient, well, that is r. R squared is the coefficient of determination. That is not something we talk about in this course. So we need to square root both sides in order to find R. So Excel will do that for you. If I type equals SQRT, that's square root, then in parentheses I'm going to type in that number, 0.8114. Because the square root of R squared is R, and that's what we want. We want R. So we take the square root of both sides, and I end up with 0 0.900777. The square root of r squared is always going to be positive by mathematical standards. However, recall that the linear correlation coefficient describes the, the best fit of this line. And because this line is negative, we have a negative slope, that means our linear correlation coefficient is going to be a negative 0.900777. So you want to make sure that you're double checking that because your math will always give you a positive value for R and then you need to double check that the sign of your linear correlation coefficient matches the sign of your slope. They should both either be positive or in this case they should both be negative. Okay, now I want to say let's do this same, same problem except instead of having 1990 be my first year, let's let 1990 be zero. So if we create another scatter plot, this is the same data. I'm going to go in again to XY scatter, same thing I just did. And again, I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and just click on them, right click, add trend line. Shows up, same thing I just did, right? Again, my format trend line shows up on the right. And I'm going to click on display equation and display R squared. You'll notice my slope is still negative 0.2317 and my R squared is still 0.8112. Uh, therefore, uh, but excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, look at your, your y-intercept is now point uh, 2.91. And that makes sense. Where my y-axis over here, x is 0, and therefore the graph touches um, the y-axis at approximately 2.9. So now the graph matches up with what we have because uh, we have an x equals 0 on our graph. 
Okay, so I want to interpret the slope. Now, we know that the slope is negative 0.2317. And if we make that over 1, I'm just going to pretend this is a fraction, put it over 1. Remember that the, in, in slope, the top number represents the y values, in this case, tons. And in the bottom, um, it's years since 1990. I know that because of the previous page. So interpreting the slope, and I'm going to go ahead and just type it see if I can move that out of the way a little bit. The negative slope implies a decrease. So um, for every year after 1990, there is a decrease of 0.2317 tons. And it's kind of vague, but there's not really a whole lot of information given here. And so in this case, I put the x first, but you also could have written that as there is a decrease of 0.2317 tons for every year after 1990. Either way, that works just fine, right? They both say the same thing, but sometimes it's helpful to write out what the y and x stand for in your problem so that you have a better, um, better chance to um, understand what's going on. Okay, the linear correlation coefficient, I'm going to go ahead and do that over here. We know from the previous page, the linear correlation coefficient is negative 0 0.900777. And again, we found that by taking the square root of 0.8114, which is here. So by taking the square root of 0.8114, we ended up with 0.9. But because we have a negative slope, we must have a negative linear correlation coefficient. Now, the interpretation of this, because it's negative and because it's close to negative 1, there, there is a strong negative linear correlation between years since 1990 and tons. So it's strong because it's close to negative 1. It's negative because it's, the line is going down. And we're talking about linear correlation. Do, are these two things correlated? And then it's, what are my x and y? Between the year since 1990, that's x, and tons is y. So that would be an interpretation of the linear correlation coefficient. And now if letter C, if we want to use the model to predict for the year 2000, well, remember, we said let 1990 be x equals 0. So therefore, 2000 would be x equals 10 because 2000 is 10 years after 1990. So I would take the equation um, y equals negative 0 0.2317, multiply that by 10, and then add 2.9156, right? That's what my, my model is doing. And because Excel is a calculator, if I start with equal sign instead of the y and then type that in, 2317 times 10 plus 2.9156, Excel does not recognize parentheses as a form of multiplication, so you do need to use that snowflake symbol uh, to get the multiplication. And therefore, for 2,000, um, we would estimate the number of tons to be approximately 0 0.6, right? I, I rounded to the nearest tenth. And that would make sense. You can see that it's continuing to go down. And 2,010 would be out here somewhere, right? Because it's x equals 10. And so it would make sense that it's about 0 0.6. So it's about where that green box is. And that's how you can use scatter plots and trend lines, correlation coefficients, how they all work in this problem. So I hope that video helped explain that a little, little better. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask.